Um, although I know this is kind of a, a strange time of day, maybe to do a demo, but um, it's what kind of what works out better for me in my schedule. Um, other than doing a nighttime, nighttime's a little chaotic around here. So we, <laughs> so anyways, noon Pacific time seems to be what works for me. So anyhow, okay. Yeah. And then the video is recorded. So, um, you guys can always go back and, um, watch it again, back through, um, the videos are easy enough to find. Um, if you're on, a, for me on a laptop, you just go up to the top of the wool and fiber arts group where the menu is. And if you click media, then it'll show videos or photos. Um, so anyhow, okay. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Carla with Curly Cues and hopefully everybody can hear me. Okay. I forgot last time I needed to speak up just a little bit louder. Um, so I'll talk a little bit louder, but anyhow, I'm Carla with Curly Cues. And today I was going to do a demo about um, some different ways or uh, applying the coarse fun yarn. Um, the photo that I posted for this, I didn't realize that I had already plied it, but that's okay. I have another skein that I spun exactly the same, just in a different color. So I can ply that one. And I'm also uh, working on one that I did in a bat form. So anyhow, uh, with coarse spun, uh, you can ply it any way that you, you can use anything that you want to ply it with. So what I mean by that is you can use another hand spun that you have spun. You can use um, any rayon thread. You can use like the rayon embroidery type thread, which I have shown you guys like I think this for me, this is one of my best and favorite options because you get all these different colors and the rayon has a nice sheen to it. Um, it's not very strong though. So you want to be careful when you are um, playing with it that you're not pulling too tight because you don't want it to snap and break. Um, if it does, it's not the end of the world. If you can find your end, you can tie it back together or make sure that that end is tucked in there and then kind of go over it a few times in that one spot. Um, and so that's a, another thing. I was going to show you guys something else that I found um, that you can use for plying. And it kind of relates to uh, possibly using it as add-ins too. So if you're coarse spinning something or if you're making a single yarn, um, a single ply yarn and you want to add something into it, something fun, something kind of neat and different, you can do that. Uh, so if you guys don't know, I, <laughs> I am... A thrift store junkie, so I love to go to thrift stores, uh, meaning um, Goodwill, uh, let's see, um, Savers I've gone to. We don't have one in our area. I have to go out of the area. Or any other little, like, um, mom and pop type thrift stores. And so when I was in Goodwill, I happen, I always look on the craft aisle, and I happen to find this package of, um, it's called Spangle Yarn Kit by Premier Yarns. And it was marked at $9.99, but I think I paid half off for this because I don't know if I would have paid $10 when I first store shopping. I'm definitely looking for the best deal. And so what I found were these. It had all this pretty sparkle yarn. And so I wouldn't use this just on its own. I mean, you could definitely just, you know, knit or crochet something with it. But what I did was I thought, oh, this would be great for plying with. And so I bought it and then I found that if I pulled it and stretched it, it would kind of pull it out. So I actually ended up with double the yardage, which was really nice. So I used this to ply this course fun that I did. And let me show you. This was kind of like a, a muted tone, kind of blase, whoops, blase type um, in shades of colors, but it did have this pink silk in there. And so I wanted to kind of highlight that pink color. So I plied it with a pink lavender spiral color or pink silver color. And when I plied it, I tried to not go too tight on my ply because I wanted to be able to see that. And so when I ply this one, I'll show you how I did it. You, if you ply it tight, you end up with these um, coils, which make it look like it's a spiral. If you ply it looser, then you'll end up with a fluffier, which is what I'm doing with my, uh, the bat that I've carded. So the thing that, the other thing that I found that was really cool was I found this entire tub for like seven or $8 and it has 
all kinds of cool little ribbons and such that you can use. So this is just kind of to give, give you an idea of different things that you can use. It has this yellow in here. It has, um, is it called Rick Rack? Rick Rack. So this would be really cute that you could apply with that. Lots of different Rick Rack there. Um, it has different ribbons. A lot of these I think you could probably tie in and do. It has a ton of bias tape. You can apply with that as well. So um, that was just kind of give you an idea. If you if you are a thrift store person and you like to look at those things, then um, you know I, I look at everything from a fiber art perspective. So I'm always looking for something that I think that I can work into a situation or into a craft somehow. So. Um, that's just to give you a little bit of an idea. So anyhow, I, this is the one that I did with that, the sparkle yarn. This is the yarn that I was spinning at our last, in our last demo. And it was a, when I was showing you the course spun, what it is, is I plied it on itself. So just to give you an idea, if you have the, the wheel with the larger orifice, you can ply two course spuns together and get more like a rope and something larger if you want you know so that's how that one came out and the purple that i spun with the rayon is like this so this one was spun from a bat of course spun from the bat and then i plied it with the silver rayon thread so has anybody been practicing their course spun or doing any spinning or anything find any cool um cool yarn or thread or anything to ply it with. So let me show you, I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to put it on my wheel. I, this is my bat that I had course spun. I believe I was spinning this at our last demo too. And so I'm just going to show you how I ply it with the rayon thread, which I've got in my other bowl and it's this silver here. So the silver and gold, I was able to pick that one up. I didn't want to go to the fabric store, so I picked that one up online. But let me turn the camera down, and we'll get it on the wheel, and I'll do some spinning and show you what I'm doing. Okay, that's a pretty, I think that's probably a pretty good angle. Okay. If you guys have any questions about this, um, type them in the comments and I'll see if I can see them. For the most part, I can. I wanna get this more on my hands. So I've already tied both the plying thread and the yarn to my leader. And I am plying counterclockwise. So if you guys are seeing this backwards, which you probably are, know that whenever I am spinning, whether it's regular spinning, coarse spinning, Anyhow you're gonna spin, I always spin clockwise. And then when I am um, going to be plying something, I always do it counterclockwise. I do it that way, it's what works best for me. That's how, um, that way I never forget which way I'm spinning. So with this yarn, I really like how it came out. It has a lot of Angelina in it. So it has a lot of sparkle and kind of wispy wild little little things happening to it. And so I want to keep that part of the texture. So technically this is on here pretty tight with this course spinning. I don't really need to even ply it. Um, if you do ply a course spin and it comes out kind of loose, then you would probably want to ply it just to kind of lock in that texture a little bit, but um, you don't have to. This one I wanted to though, just cause I wanted to show um, a little bit more with it. So when you are core spinning and plying, for me, my yarn is on my left-hand side, my plying is on my right. And basically it's just like doing a regular ply, except instead of holding your yarn and spinning like this or doing it, this to where it's more over here, instead of plying, as if you were plying, a regular yarn where you're doing it kind of like this and you're applying two yarns together. I like to have a little bit more control over it. And because I don't want to do a real tight ply on it, 
I want to let it just kind of run and roll over the yarn. So you could do it with one hand if you want and control your slack with the other. So then you end up getting a real loose. Let me see if I can unwind this to show you. You'll get a real loose ply over it. It's on there, but it's relatively loose. If you want to make it end up looking more like um, little beads or, or bubbles, you can do it tighter. If you hold, still let this gradually go through your hand, hold your thread a bit tighter. You can even kind of pull on it. And when you do that, it turns that big, big chunks of core spin into something that looks more like like beads. I don't know if that's a good picture there of that. But see how it's tighter? It makes it look more like it was actually almost um, coil spun. So if you go tighter, you can see and feel it pulling through. Like this big piece here, if I go tighter, What happens is I just turned that into something that looks like it was um, coil spun or core spun, not core spun, um, coiled or spiraled. And it gives it that nice, cool texture look. So I like both ways. I like that. And then I also like to go a little looser. Maybe on the Angelina sections, I'll go a little bit looser because I want to still see that Angelina fluff out. The other thing too is when you're plying, if you're plying a regular yarn and you're holding your, your yarn like this, you've got more of a distance in between where your plies are hitting. But when you're doing it with the course, um, course spinning, I would, I'm trying to keep it a little bit closer because I want to see that, this got stuck. I want to be able to see what I'm actually doing. I want it, I want it to see the effects of it. So I want to see the little coils in there. So like this big clump here, if you go tight on it and let's do this one too, we'll have a good stretch holding here, gradually letting it go through. You don't want to have twist buildup in your hand. Pull it out. And then you've got that. It's all about just practice and getting the feel for it. On the thinner, narrower parts, definitely I like to go a little bit thinner. So say if you were spinning and you spun your yarn on a regular size wheel with a smaller orifice, you can still do your core spinning like I had said before. Let's see if I can get this closer to the camera. And then you end up with these little, little bobbles or coils. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone calls them a little, something a little different. To me, they kind of just look like beads. So if you pull it tighter, you're going to get that look. Uh-oh, my yarn's caught up. My thread. And if you go looser, then you're going to save more of the definition of the core spinning that you had worked on. So let me get this up here. I've got a technical problem. This somehow got twisted or tied up. So I'm going to break it off. I know that's probably not. So here will be an example. <laughs> if you're, if it gets twisted up, this should probably be under a little bit of tension or something if it can, but if it gets twisted up, I'm just going to tie this back together. 
maybe I could put it on my leg so I can actually see it against a black background here. There we go. So I'm just gonna tie it back together. I could clip that with scissors, but I think what I'm going to do is when I spin it, I'm just going to hide it in there somehow. So when I get to that point, that's where it is, where it has that double. I'm going to go back over that a little bit and I'm gonna hide it. So there we go. A little bit still sticking out. I might go back with that when I skein it onto a skein winder and then I'll, I'll clip it. So I was thinking about the plying techniques and a lot of the time I do, when I do course band, I'll do the auto plying, which I think I showed last time. Whereas when you're doing it, you tie the, the other yarn that you're, your string that you're tying or threading plying with, just tie it onto your, your leader and attach it with that. Um, but basically any of your plying techniques that you would normally use in spinning a regular yarn, you can use that with your course spin. Just think of it as just a chunkier yarn, okay? So if you were going, you could chain ply it. If you're someone who likes to do chain plying, you could do that with this. Just do your regular plies. You can do it loose. So you end up with something like this, or you can keep more tension on your plying thread and you can turn it into something that looks more like beads or coils. So it all depends on how, how, um, how much tension you have on this plying thread. Once you get going, it's relatively fast to do. You don't necessarily have to keep your eye on it, but I like to just pull back. I like to keep these pretty close together. Like I said, not like a regular ply where you've got a lot of gap or space in between, but I like to keep them relatively close and let it wind around and then bring it up to the orifice and let it pull it through. So if you're feeling really ambitious and creative, you could even take this yarn and then ply it again. So you could ply it again onto another yarn or you could do some tighter coils. If you had a thicker yarn, I don't know if it'll work with this one, but you could let this wrap around and then push it up, let it wrap around. So instead of having the ply, you would have more thicker coils. And I would, if you did it like this, I probably wouldn't do it with a rayon thread. I would do it with a, um, with a heavier, thicker core, something that's going to be able to withstand you holding on tight to that. Oh, whoops. There we go. See, I have to <laughs> Let's go back. I went the wrong way with that. What I usually do is I will spin all my, you know, the yarns that I'm working on. I'll spin, you know, three or four yarns and then I will take them all off the bobbin because I like to fill this bobbin up. I think it's a two pound bobbin so I can get quite a bit on here. So I will fill it all up and then take the yarns off and then I'll ply all at the same time. So one day I'll be spinning and then the next day I'll be plying. There we go. but it comes out so nice and sparkly and magical. I was thinking the other day that um, at each of the sales, I usually, I try to buy um, from a different vendor. And I was thinking what I would do is um, I could either try to spin it all into some singles and then make like a, um, a cardigan 
or maybe spin them all up in these funny fluffy things and maybe do a weaving. Um, so it'd be like a waffle weaving, <laughs> a waffle wall hanging or a waffle fibers um, sweater. I'm not sure. So let's see, Mary has a question. Um, do you know approximately how many yards of thread you might need to ply? Just bought some expensive, oh, that, yeah, the Guterman threads um, for four ounces. Okay, so the, oh, usually the, um, these end up being, um, you end up definitely end up with less yardage than uh, you do when you are spinning a regular yarn. And so what I would do, I, <laughs> these, how many yards are on these? These that I have, it says, okay, so the spools that I have, they're 500 meters. I don't know offhand what that is um, converted to yards, but they're bigger ones, so they go a long ways. Now, those ones, the yarn that you did buy, the expensive ones, um, those are smaller, so they were on these. Let me see if I, I have some of those, <coughs> or I did initially. I don't know if I have any left in here. So you're looking at more like, well, the, oh wait. well, this is just a regular Coates and Clark one. So these don't have nearly as much yardage on it. So this one only has like 300 yards. You could do, you could ply maybe one skein, maybe two. I'm not sure. The thing is, is that um, if you're going to use it for plying, it does take quite a bit, especially if you're wrapping it around a lot. So um, I would probably look to buy the inexpensive rayon thread um, and not the super expensive one. I know which one you're talking about because I would go to when I first got my embroidery machine. Um, it was like not pre-internet days, but it was pretty early <laughs> in the Internet. And so I don't there wasn't it was pre-Amazon, that's for sure. And so um, I wasn't able to purchase it online. But you do want to buy something, these bigger spools, if you can, especially if you're going to do a lot of plying. The other thing to keep in mind is depending on how you're plying, if you're doing it pretty tight, you are not going to be able to see the, um, you're not going to be able to see the, uh, the thread. So you don't necessarily have to use an expensive one. You can use, maybe just get a, um, like a gray color or a black or any color that's going to coordinate with the yarn that you're using. <coughs> so that's what I would do. And someone had asked, oh, you learned your lesson, Mary? <laughs> um, well, and it says, what will I use this yarn for? So this yarn specifically, I was thinking about making a cowl with it, just a small, a short neck cowl. I had one of those here somewhere. Um, one skein is enough, large enough to do a cowl that's maybe about five or six inches um, in height. And it'll definitely go around your neck so you can make a little cowl with it. The other thing that you can do is um, weave it. A lot of people use the art yarns for weaving. Um, that's especially like if you look on Instagram or TikTok, you'll see a lot of folks weaving with it. Um, but sometimes what I like to do too, my thing that I used to say was that my yarn was my finished project. And so um, I bend at some fiber festivals and I sell the yarn. And then those other folks, whoever buys it, they do whatever they want with it. Um, but usually it is weavers. I do have some folks that'll do maybe a little part of a, um, if they're working on a, a sweater or something of that nature, they will put like work maybe one or two rows in this. But um, yeah, you don't get a lot of yardage with it. And so... I mean, if you wanted... You can work it just like a regular, regular yarn. Um, for me, I wouldn't do it, <laughs> it just because it would end up being relatively bulky. And even though after this, oh, I was going to bring my steamer on and show you guys. But after, um, after you steam it or you set your twist, It is a pretty sturdy yarn, but as far as something, if you were to use it for um, a cloth, you know, piece of clothing, a jack, a sweater, or a cardigan, it would be uh, you would have to be very gentle with it. 
you could work your collar out of this. That would be cool. Instead of having like a fur collar, you could do that. Tapestry weaving, Kim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's perfect for weaving. Um, I have a weaving that I did a long time ago. It's hanging in my living room though, but I can show or post some examples or it, like I said, if you just look on Instagram or Pinterest and you just look up, you know, um, art yarn weavings, then you'll see that. I did a long time ago, make some bags, um, purses. I got out my sewing machine and I did a, uh, used like a faux leather to make the bag. And then I crocheted with these and I did just like a stripe or a strip. And then I did that and I tacked it and sewed it onto the purse. So that was really cool. Um, you can also take this, if you want to do something small, you can do maybe work it in some wrist warmers, do with some regular yarn, do a row or two of this, that kind of thing. But again, it just all depends on what, what you'd like to do, what you're, your outcome is. I started spinning art type yarn just because I thought it was fun. And at that time I could crochet, but I wasn't a knitter. Um, my friend that showed me how to spin or got me into it was, is a knitter and she loves to knit. And so she was spinning her own yarn to knit, um, you know, sweaters and that sort of thing with um, but for me, I wanted to make the yarn just because it looked like it was fun. <laughs> and so after I spun a few singles, then I was done with it. And uh, yeah, so then I started looking on, um, I think when I started spinning it with Lexi Boger was doing um, Plucky Fluff. She was doing a lot of um, art type spinning. And so when I saw the stuff that she was doing, I was like, oh yeah, that's what I want to do. So um, I watched a lot of things um, on her and then just kind of got a couple different books and started experimenting. Um, at the end of my yarn, when I first spin my core yarns, I usually, let me see if I can pull this out. I spin a pretty decent length of just a straight single. And so then as I'm applying it here towards the end, at the end here, I end up just tying it off. I do a like this and tie it off. Now, once you do that, it is going to unravel a little bit but not a whole lot, not gonna, it doesn't travel. The unraveling does not usually travel up into here. See, see how that stopped it. So if you give yourself a good length of single, just, you know, a normal single spun yarn, when you go to ply that off at the end, that's gonna hold. So, and I think I mentioned before, I like to steam this. So when, after I pull it, take it off, put it on the nitty knotty, tie it off, I will hang it. Actually, I just hang it on my, um, near my shower rack. So the steam can go back into the shower, but I have a little handheld steamer, fill that up with water. And then I go up and down along the skein. And I love watching it when it hits this, it kind of, it'll shrink it up a little bit and it'll make the, um, the coils a lot more defined. And this one, let me see if I can get these. So these have been steamed. Of course, these are coils, but it does, it makes it, it's, it's on there. It'll, once you're steaming, it locks all that in. And so this is kind of what I do too <laughs> with my, this is what I do with my yarns is I hang them up because I just like to look at them. Um, I'm not sure what my plan is. Thank you, Fran. I don't, I'm not sure what my plan is with these yarns. Um, like I said, I do sell a lot of them at the fiber festival and with COVID and it being, um, you know, locked down and not just having my first show for the first time in years last year. Um, I didn't really have as many art yarns as I would have liked to have or what I normally have. And so I think I might just be saving them to, to sell then, but I do have some weavers that like to, to get these. Whoops, this one's coming off. Of course, many. This is a coarse spun yarn that I did a long time ago. This is a Cheviot and this is just with a very loose ply. Had I pulled it tighter, we could have got this nice tight pearly look, which I think is, is kind of, it's a favorite of mine. So I think it's kind of, you know, pretty popular with it being 
apply tighter like that than opposed to not. Because um, you can see that running along there. Now this one, this would be, this is a pretty sturdy yarn, so that would be good to make something with a clothing item. This was done from a bat. And this one's was plied as well. So I don't ply all of them. It just, it depends. It depends on, you know, what I'm, what I'm thinking about, what I'd like to do with the project. But, um, yeah, so I don't know if you guys have any other questions. I wouldn't, um, you know, don't be afraid. Let me pull this back up. You know, don't be afraid to apply it with anything that you would normally do. Um, like I said, I could show you some of those other ways of applying, but it's, you know, as a spinner, um, once you learn how to apply your yarn, just think of it, just kind of take all of those tools and put them towards your art yarns. The thing with the art yarn is that there is no rules with it. So whatever you do with it, however you make it, then it's going to be okay. You know, um, I kind of, I might work on some things like this. I kind of liked how this one, <laughs> how the one that I was demoing, I kind of think this is kind of neat how it came out. And I haven't even, um, I haven't steamed or soaked this one yet either, but it's just came out kind of cool. Even the colors are kind of wonky, but um, kind of neat. I like that. So, okay, well, I wasn't going to take up too much time. Just wanted to give you just a general idea of how to apply that using the rayon thread. Um, but like I said, if you would like to chain ply, you can do that with this as well. Um, apply it any way that you like, you know, just uh, use your imagination and um, go for it. So I think some of the other stuff that I showed you in that container, I'm going to use, I'm probably going to cut up some of that, like that rickrack or some of that other stuff. I'm probably going to cut it up and mix it in as I'm spinning. So I think that's what I'll do. Um, okay. You're welcome, Mary. Yeah. Feel free to send me a message or anything. Um, if you have any questions, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Otherwise, you know, just kind of, yeah, the idea is, oh, good. I'm glad, Fran. Yeah. Just let your imagination go. You kind of just got to cut out no rules and then just kind of go for it and see what you come up with. If you don't like it, you know, the yarn, <laughs> redo it. If you don't, if you apply it once, you don't like it, apply it again. Who knows? You never know what you're going to come up with. So, Anyhow, all right, well, you guys have a great afternoon, and we will see you all next time. Um, next time, I think what I'm going to do is I'll do a crochet video on um, how to make a cowl out of this. So, all right, okay, we will see you guys later. Have a great day.